to reach, and they make most of the decisions. Direct Reach Reach can help you to connect with these business executives. Their expert team does all the work. They craft the message, send out the email, and track the results. Let Direct Reach Reach promote, manage, and grow your business. Contact them at 800-340-1117. That's 800-340-1117. The Living Full Out Radio Show would like to thank all of our partners. They are a great resource to the show and to the community. If you own or manage a business and would like to promote your services, give us a call to partner with the show. You may even qualify for a guest hosting segment. Please call us at 310-909-7800 or email at partner at livingfullout.com. Once again, that number is 310-909-7800. Or you can email us at partner at livingfullout.com. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. A professional motivational speaker, Nancy can help you overcome obstacles and start living full out. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Welcome back. So again, this is the Living Full Out Show. I am Nancy Soleri. And today we're talking about letting go so we can really go after life in a big way. Let go of those limiting beliefs, those negative experiences in your life so that you can thrive in a big way. I'm so excited today. We have a guest host. He is a registered dietitian. Uh, we have Andrea and John Coley here with us. And uh, she's a nutritionist, but she also is a consultant and she's really a health advocate advocate and a communicator. I mean, there's no limits to what Andrea can do. Welcome, Andrea. Thank you so much. Yeah. So tell us, our listeners, briefly, so what what, what do you do? You do so many things. It really blows me away. Oh, well, thank you so much. Uh, as you said, I'm a registered dietitian. I'm also uh, a media consultant, and I consult with companies to help them come up with better nutrition messaging and, and health messaging that can really speak to people that people can really hear, and that's not uh, confusing or is misleading them. And then I also do a lot of nutrition counseling and also do, do a little bit of nutrition policy there, c- trying to help make our environments better and the healthy choice to be the easier choice. I love that. And again, she's with us during this segment, and we're live, so call in because she's got so much great knowledge to share. Uh, the number to call in, again, is 800-333-0001. And let's go take the next caller here. Uh, we have Nicole. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Uh, you're with Andrea and Nancy. Tell us what's going on today. Um, I'm just really disappointed that I can't uh, work out as much as I used to because um, I have a hard time balancing between my schedule with work and school. And I was looking for like some tips or advice on how to release some of my stress because I can't balance my schedule. Nicole, I am right there with you. I have that same issue with, with finding time. Andrea, what do you think? Well, I think that's a common common issue that a lot of people have really trying to balance all the, the things that are going on in, in their lives. Uh, but what's the great thing about exercise or physical activity is you don't have to do it all at once. And there's things that you can do during the day that will help relieve some of that stress. You can, you can exercise in spurts as well, Nicole. You don't have to do it all at one time. You can work out for 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, do things like... Put more activity in your day. Make your life a little more inconvenient, if you will. Park further away from where you're going so that you have a little bit of a walk. Do take the stairs whenever you can. You know, take that grocery cart back to the grocery store after you've unloaded your your groceries. And just when you, you when you try to think about doing activity and not always taking the easy way out, you'll find that your stress level will probably go down, and you'll feel better about yourself because you're going you're not. You're getting some exercise in and some activity in. Does that sound like some, you know, helpful, really easy skills that you can acquire that you can do? It does. Sounds really helpful. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You have just enlightened me. I am going to take that grocery cart back more often. <laughs> I, I am telling you simple things like yeah, that. And it's right? also the, a polite thing to do as well. Look at see so many things I'm learning from her. Well, I, I hope that was helpful for you today. We believe in you, and again, it's a new year, so just step out there, give it your best. Every day is a new one, okay? So don't be hard on yourself, but uh, just go for it in a big way, okay? Uh, stay on the line so we can get your information, okay? Okay. All right. Have a good day. Nice talking with you, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you. Such great advice and just really uh, easy to implement. I, I love it. So we're going to go back to the lines. We have Tori. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. 
Hi, Nancy. Hi. You are, you're with me, and you're with Andrea today. We're both here to, to listen and help you out. What's going on? Okay. All right. Okay, so my boyfriend and I broke up about six weeks ago, and it's been really hard for me to let go. I'm still pretty new to Houston, so I don't have friends I can go out with, and my family doesn't live here. So I'm alone most of the time, and that's because he was the person I spend all of my time with. But I want to move forward, uh, but I just think to all this free time and alone time is hard, and it makes me miss him a lot. So my main uh, concern and question is how can I let him go and be okay with being alone? Mm, you know what? Again, a place that I've been before, Andrea. I'm sure you've encountered I have, that. I have been there before, Tori. I know. I know that story very, very well, and and I really do feel for you. But this is a, a temporary time for you. you it, your breakup is very fresh, and just speaking from personal experience, time is the best healer, and it's going to take a bit for you to be more confident and feel better in yourself. And I know it's harder because you you have it's a new place for you and you don't have the social circle yeah. yet built up, but that will happen with time. And you know, you've got to get yourself out there and meet people and m- make yourself available. But do g- give yourself a break and realize that it's hard to get over a breakup. And, yeah. you know, and, and sometimes you just have to embrace that and let it, you know, kind of let those feelings come and that will really help you to let go later. I think that's okay. great, great advice. And, and also remember, this is an exciting time because people sure. come into our lives for different reasons, different growth spurts that we have. But oh my gosh, your next great love could be right around the corner. Okay, so you have to walk out there confidently, kind of build yourself up, keep developing yourself, learning, growing so that you can really be that strong girlfriend, wife, who knows for the next person. Absolutely. All right. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Oh, no yes. problem. Um, stay in the line. Let's go ahead and get your information. We'll send you some some tips I think will help you, you know, during this time. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you so much. You are just giving such great advice today because oh, I, I think you're right. I mean, this is this is actually special time that she has to do her own personal growth mm-hmm. and to kind of to, exactly and do do some some thinking about what makes her tick and and why she's she's in a very difficult time, no mm-hmm. doubt about it. All breakups are tough, and hers is fairly new, only six weeks ago. So sometimes you do have to give yourself that time to mourn a little bit. Well, and being what you do, so lovely for a profession, you know, nutrition and fitness and all that, if our listeners have that time, what's a good way for them to channel having better health during that time? Well, I for them to have more time to for themselves. Well, again, that's something that nutrition and diet and food and exercise can all help with helping us to feel better. And I you know, I would love to hear from people if they wanted to tweet me at Andrea N. John Coley. That's A N D R E A N G I A N C O L I. I know it's a long but I, I I like my name, so I, I put it, I put it out there. It's a great name. It's a great Thank name. You. And right back at you, my my Paisana. So Larry, exactly. Yes. But Italians but, here, exactly. But but you know, having good health, having you know, really great skills and habits in your back pocket for nutrition and fitness. I mean, that's what you're all about. I mean, I just spent so much time with you here this morning talking about, oh gosh, different foods and how they work within Working our body. body I have a new outlook on cheese, and, which I love. <laughs> cheese <laughs> but um but but you know share with our listeners what you know given that today's show is about letting go what is some motivational advice that you have for those listeners in in letting go of again it might be a relationship it might be health needs or concerns they have i think we have to give ourselves a break you know we we do put a lot of stress uh, on ourselves and that's you know that that's a struggle but we are human beings and life is stressful and if you live a healthful life as much as you can and try not to make it you know too hard on yourself when you if you you know mess up or have a bad day or something like that where you maybe don't eat as well or you don't exercise give yourself a break there's always time to get back on that that train or that wagon or that horse or, or whatever it is mm-hmm. tomorrow is another day and the rest of today I love it. I love it. And that is so like simple, but at the same time, very true, you know, and and, and you you know, in the consulting that you've done in terms of health and nutrition, what do you think is the biggest obstacle that people have in order to really let go and live full out? 
What I find with people when it comes to health and when it comes to nutrition and food is they become very hung up on certain types of diets or certain types of food. And, you know, it's the total diet. It's the total way that you eat that matters. It's not one particular thing, one particular food. And then if we can let go of that and start to embrace the total holistic me, my, my diet, my exercise plan, it's all, it's a marriage that should never divorce and we don't we don't want to get so hung up on one thing or another and realize that what we're doing as a total is what's important. Yeah, it's very mental. It's it's really it building a, a strong mindset. It's knowing that you're worth it. I mean, I'm sure you handle that a lot, you know, in your own consulting. And and in terms of, like, your advocate work, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Well, what I, I do right now is I, I work on policies, like I said earlier, that try to work with environments like our our food environments, our built environment, our cities where the choices to make for activity or for eating may not be that easy to pick the healthy choice. So making the healthy choices easier. So for example, going into a restaurant and they may and they have a section of their of their menu or their whole menu has healthier choices that you can make rather than having to go through and figure out, oh my gosh, like this has got a lot of oil in it or this has got a lot of fat in it. Working with restaurants to offer healthier choices while also helping business and working with cities so that our cities can become more walkable, more inviting places where we want to be outside, where we want to be walking or, or riding our bike. So working with cities and, and restaurants and, and different different uh, entities and organizations to really help change our environments so healthy choices are easy choices. Well, and I'm personally grateful that you are in the world, in our Thank communities, you. because if we didn't have advocates like you, we wouldn't have bike paths. We wouldn't have those menus. And so I personally want to extend a, a grateful uh, thank you. I appreciate and that. Again, and likewise for you. I mean, you the advice that you're putting out there and, and uh, talking with people about how they can let go is so important and so wonderful, and you do a, a fabulous job at it. Well, thank you so much. And really, it's been great having Having you today guest hosting and uh, we have more callers coming shortly just real quick we have 30 seconds give them that that um, way to contact you one more time great they can tweet me at andrea and john coley a-n-d-r-e-a-n-g-i-a-n-c-o-l-i or call me at 310-379-6512 again 310-379-6512 and that's love great. to talk to you. Andrea, you're one of a kind. Thank you oh, so much. You. And we'll be right back with the Living Full Out Show. Imagine relaxing with a cup of the finest tea in existence. Complex, perfectly balanced, fragrant teas that were once only reserved for emperors and royalty are now yours to enjoy with waterfall teas. With a range of fragrances, flavors, and pleasures selected from the most elite tea regions in the world, the nectar of the tea leaves of our exquisite teas spreads goodness from the mouth to the whole body, making every essence of your being rejoice. Go to WaterfallTeas.com and let Waterfall Tea Company be your personal tea sommelier. WaterfallTeas.com Living Full Out is a motivational speaking and life coaching company dedicated to helping others achieve their potential. Whether you're looking for one-on-one coaching or seeking to empower your employees with customized presentations, Nancy Solari will give you and your team the tools to de-stress, self-motivate, and pursue your vision for the future. To find out more about our coaching and presentation options, visit livingfullout.com or call 310-909-7800. Again, that's livingfullout.com or 310-909-7800. Are you looking to attract more clients for your business? Well, the folks at Direct Retreat can help. They can connect you with business owners, presidents, and C-level executives that make decisions on buying your services. Usually these executives are difficult to reach, and they make most of the decisions. Direct Retreat can help you to connect with these business executives. Their expert team does all the work. They craft the message, send out the email, and track the results. Let Direct Retreat promote, manage, and grow your business. Contact them at 800-340-1117. That's 800-340-1117. The Living Full Out Radio Show would like to thank all of our partners. They are a great resource to the show and to the community. If you own or manage a business and would like to promote your services, give us a call to partner with the show. You may even qualify for a guest hosting segment. Please call us at 310-909-7800 or email at partner at livingfullout.com. Once again, that number is 
7800. Or you can email us at partner at livingfullout.com. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a trusted life coach, Nancy will help you overcome setbacks and embrace all life has to offer. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Welcome back. This is the Living Full Out Show. Today we're talking about letting go so that we can really step forward in a really confident, big way to live our lives full out. We have a lot of calls on the line. We're going to try to get through as many as we can. Again, that number is 800-333-0001. We're going to go to the lines now. We have Riley. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, thank you. Hi, Riley. So tell us, what's going on today? Um, I recently graduated from college, Mm -hmm. and while I was there, I made a few, like, best friends. Like, we were inseparable. And then my last semester was just an internship, which was 40 hours a week, and then I was working on top of that and going to school. Mm -hmm. So I was always busy, and I lost touch with all of them. And so by the end of the semester, whenever I could hang out again, they didn't want anything to do with me, wouldn't go to my graduation, Hmm. wouldn't even call me back and now i'm having trouble making new friendships and like letting go of the negative one did they did they ever tell you why they started to push you away um they claimed that i didn't have time for them anymore Hmm. you know which i was i was very busy but (laughs) well you don't feel bad about being busy but sometimes the beg- the best thing we can do in life is just be humble and and ask for forgiveness and say, you know what, I was in a time in my life where I needed to do this, and and I'm really sorry that I wasn't there for you, and and you know more than anything, I would love to reignite that friendship because you mean so much to me because of X, Y, and Z. You know, just not coming from the blame game and and either that, but I would find out what their communication style is. Call them up on the phone, meet them face to face, send them an email, but put that out there to them. And you know, they have the choice to be your friend or not, but. The great thing about life, and I know that, you know, you're still younger on the spectrum of an entire life, is you are going to have so many friends that are going to enter your world for different reasons and different times. So just be open and, and get out there and join clubs and do activities so that you can meet those people because great friendships are really everywhere. And once you do have those great friendships, and I, I just thought about this myself this year, I'm going to dedicate to get in touch with more people too. If we reach out to them, they may want us back as friends. They may not, but at least you do the effort. Okay, so just just put yourself okay. out there in 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 reaching out to them, trying one more time to reunite that friendship, and put yourself out there again to meet new friends. and And I believe in you very much, and I, I'd like to stay in touch with you if I can get your information. We can uh, stay in touch with you after the show. Okay, awesome. All right. Thanks, Riley. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go back to the lines. We have Monique. Monique, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, how are you? Hi, Monique. I know you have been on hold for some time, so I'm so glad I'm here with you. (laughs) Tell me what's going on today. Well, I feel like I need to let go of the fact that I probably won't get my dream job. Um, I've been working for the government for 20 years, right out of college. And it's always provided with stable living, good benefits, but I am very bored and completely unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. And I considered leaving my job, but when I looked into retirement issues, even to other government agencies, it doesn't seem that it would be beneficial for me to leave. And it's on my mind every day I go to work, and I need to kind of let it go, but you know what? I've got another 10 years here, and mm-hmm. after that, maybe I can do something else, but... Is there, is there, any, room, is there any room for promotion for you? Um, not, there are pay grades. There are some promotions, but I'm a senior manager, mm-hmm. so the higher you get up, the fewer positions there are. Mm-hmm. And my career has been unique in that. I don't know how this happened, but I've always worked in specialized positions. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of like a jack of all trades, but not a subject matter expert in any one thing, based on the kind of jobs I've done through the last 20 years. Um, so it was it was a struggle to even get this last promotion, which mm-hmm. I've been in this position for seven years. But I'm trying. Um, mm-hmm. You know, with the, it, the downturn in the economy, a lot of government, mm-hmm. uh, my particular uh, government agency, 
Um, they're not hiring as much or they're, you know, restructuring and you, get up, you end up with different duties. Or yeah. Well, I, I, I have some thoughts for you, Monique, because the thing yeah. is, is, you know, I'm sure you're really good at what you do. That's why you're, you know, you're a senior. You're at the top there, right? But remember that there's so many different facets to who we are. I'm sure that you're a, a loving friend and mother and and maybe a daughter and, and all that. And I just want you to, to understand that your job does not define all of who you are or all of who you can be. And so I think in this new year, it would be really exciting to see what you could do outside this job perhaps to, you know, help you financially as well as just diversify you in terms of your hobbies and passions. You know, organizations that maybe could use your expertise on the weekends or in the evenings or part-time or maybe you have that entrepreneurial bug somewhere in you that so many of us get, um, you know, that you can channel. Just really explore beyond your job that you're currently at, you know, how else you can evolve and grow. And then within the job that you're currently at, you know, just be the best you can at that because when you leave that job one day, you're going to be memorable. They're going to be talking about Monique for years and years to come. So try not to get bored, but try to stay excited. Try to, um, you know, help maintain your teams to, to, to also stay motivated. Is that something you can do? Um, you know, I'm trying to. Um, I have gone to my spot in there seven years, and what happens is repetitive. I manage the finances for an engineering program. So I'm kind of been doing the same thing for the last seven years. Mm-hmm. And so in talking to my program manager, I've asked for more work. Mm-hmm. And um, he's talked to his boss. And be- because of how tricky government is, it's like no one wants, they don't want to lose any position. So to say that I don't have enough work mm-hmm. would mean that they don't need some of the other positions. So it's kind of tricky. Mm-hmm. So what I did on my own recently, is I, and I work with all, all engineers, mm-hmm. is I went to one of the engineers and asked to take over one of his job responsibilities mm-hmm. that I knew I could do without engineering experience. Mm-hmm. So I've well, see, that. and that and that is exactly what I'm talking about. You're putting yourself out there, and the thing is, is. It's, it's, we don't know and you don't know yet what's coming, what's still possible. Just keep asking, just what you did with that one, um, to, to, to ask for help and see if somebody else could use your services. That's yeah. perfect. I mean, just keep doing that. You know, I have actually some great thoughts for you on this, more than we can share on the air per se, because they're going to be more customized to you. So could I get your information and talk to you off the show a little further? Yes. Yeah. Great. No, because I, 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 I believe in you, and I want you to stay on the line. We'll get you information, and I'm going to be calling you after the show to talk a little further. Okay? Okay. Thanks, Monique. So many great questions today. We're going to go to the lines one more time. We have Reggie. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. I'm really good, and happy to be with you. So tell me, what's going on today? All right. Uh, well, my name is Reggie. And uh, listening to the program that's been going on and some of the stories that other people have shared, mm-hmm. uh, what comes to mind for me for letting go is probably the relationship I had about four years ago mm-hmm. and how it's kind of affecting me now when I try to, you know, put myself out there and date and meet new people. I always seem to find something that's reminiscent of that particular relationship or I, it's, I'm just very nitpicky and I, I believe it's time for me to just let go of those memories and the things that are holding me back from having a fulfilling relationship. You know what? It is so interesting, Reggie, because you are, um, you are kind of pulling together everything we've talked about today because at the end of the day, you are the only one who can decide whether or not to let go of a relationship or not. But there are so many exciting friendships, relationships, education, and experiences ahead of you that when we hold yeah. on, we hold on to the past, when we hold on to a relationship, it doesn't allow us to flourish and grow. And I, and what I th- yeah. what I hear you saying is that you're you're kind of you've kind of gone through the trenches, you've thought about it, you've grinded about yeah. it, you've you you've probably cried about it you've laughed about it it's been angry about it and now you're just letting go yeah. right that's a lot yeah, of emotion that's, exactly that's a what it is. that energy could be better used for something greater so i i just i'm so proud of you for getting to that place and i'd love to stay on the line with you afterwards and and you know I have some ideas for you of how you can channel this new passion and energy to really live your life full out so thank you for calling in today yeah 
Thank you, Reggie. Thank you. Um, what a great show today. I really uh, appreciate everybody who called in. We have a, a staff here that works really hard to put together a great show. I want to thank Eric and, and Paul from CRN as well as my team here, everybody who puts this together. Uh, Jeff Eisen, thank you very much. I want to, again, thank you to um, Andrea Ginkoli and, and Ruth Sharp and everybody who put together a show that is about motivating people to let go of those negative thoughts, negative experiences, so you can live your life full out. We'll be back next week with a very exciting show about maximizing your potential, so again, you can live your life full out. My name is Nancy Solari, and you know, as a certified life coach, I really value this time that I have with you, because life, again, it's, it's, it's a treasure. We want to treasure it. We want to make sure that For all the frustrations, for all the negative experiences, for all the relationships that have come and have, and have gone, you know, that we don't let that define who we can be in the future. And you really have to hold yourself right now in this day and time to know that you have the ability to make the friends that you want in life. You really do. You have the ability to get the career or be make a big impact in an organization. You have that ability. It's not going to happen overnight, so you got to get creative and, and think it through. And that's what we do at Living Full Out. So if you have questions beyond this show, give us a call at Living Full Out at 310-909-7800. You can actually call me personally at extension 101. Have a great day. This is the Living Full Out Show. Watch out, better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why, Santa Claus is coming to town, he's making a list, checking it twice, gonna find out he's naughty or nice, Santa Claus is coming to town, he sees you when you're sleeping, knows when you're away He knows if you've been bad or good So be good for goodness sake You better watch out you better not cry You better not pout I'm telling you why Santa Claus is coming to town He sees you when you're sleeping He knows when you're away He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town, Santa Claus is coming to town. Thank you, thank you ladies and gentlemen Nice to see all of you again Let me wish you all A Merry Christmas Happy Hanukkah And Happy Holidays And welcome to uh, the South Point Hotel 
in the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. If you would, please welcome my dear friends, the Bob Rosario Ensemble. Mr. Bob Sachs at the bass. Mike Meacham on the drums. One of Santa's helpers who's out on parole. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Hart at the guitar. Under the direction of Mr. Joey Singer at the piano. We're just going to have a, a festive day today. Celebrating this uh, wonderful season with wonderful music and wonderful talent. And uh, I'm very pleased to have so many talented people join me today to celebrate this wonderful time of year. Ladies and gentlemen, star of Vegas, the show, Reva Rice is with us. Now, this group, um, headed by a, a Grammy Award winner, Rod Henley, uh, who formed this wonderful a cappella jazz group. And it's all Christmas music. You're going to love it. Ladies and gentlemen, Rod Henley. Jasmine is with us today. And I'm privileged. And I love when we do this every year that I get a chance to bring on this wonderful gal who is a, started out as a wonderful singer in the glory days of Las Vegas on the Strip and uh, became our lieutenant governor. And uh, I'm lucky enough to call her my lovely bride, Lorraine Hunt Bono, ladies and gentlemen. A fan favorite, one of the funny, funny guys, and a really talented musician and singer and songwriter. And he's going to do something today that will help keep you in that festive mood. Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Blair is with us. And a terrific concert pianist who has so many CDs out and plays in so many different styles. And a fan favorite. And today he will uh, just... Take us down a, 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 with a journey of, of wonderful Christmas music. Mr. Danny Wright, ladies and gentlemen. So we have a, we have a terrific, terrific lineup today. And I'm excited. We do this once a year. It just seems like the other day we've done this. This is our 15th Christmas show. Unbelievable. I know. You know, I just uh, was reading a thing today. I, you know, when you talk about monologue, you go, well, now I've got to keep it in the mood of the holiday season can't just talk about politics or the stuff that I read in the news or hear in the news. And I, I, I read this survey shows that Silent Night, the song Silent Night, is the most popular Christmas song of all time. It's international in many different languages. But this year, my favorite is, I'm sick of the Kardashians and what they have to say. I would have joyous holiday if they would go away. You didn't even know I was going to do that. Did you? Nah. I get into so much trouble. You th how, did you think I was going to stop being a reverend just because it's Christmas? Come on, stop it. I saw a thing that Kim Kardashian the other day said, this year she wants to celebrate the Christmas season by doing something that truly reflects who she is as a person. And the first thing she did, went out and bought a fake Christmas tree. <laughs> hey, I can write this stuff down. You could take it back. The second week of January, we'll, we'll review this stuff. Hey, you know, this is the season for office parties. Everybody's having an office party. And I come from Connecticut, where there was like the insurance capital of the world. Everybody had the office party. Travelers insurance, at insurance. And I had a friend of mine who uh, is a boss of, of an insurance agency, and he decided he was going to have his annual Christmas party. And when it came to bonuses, of course, they're all cutting back. So he decided what he would do for Christmas bonus. He would pick up, uh, pick the three, the three best salesmen, and and decide which one gets a Christmas bonus. So at the Christmas party, he brought the three best salesmen, one, two, and three, into his office. And said, okay, this is who gets the Christmas bonus. Whoever can improvise and show me something that's on you that reflects the season of Christmas. Well, the, look, the first guy took out his car keys. Took them out and shook them. The guy said, what's that? Jingle bells. Oh, that's pretty good. Said to the second guy, what about you? He pulled out his cell phone and turned on the light and held it up. He said, what's that? He said, well, that's the star that the three wise men 
followed to find the manger. He said, well, that's really good. He said to the third guy, what about you? He says, pulled out a pair of pink panties out of his pocket. <laughs> he said, what's that? He said, these are carols. <laughs> hey, we got a great show today. Stay with us. We're coming right back after these words. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dennis Bono. Please join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. for our live taping of The Dennis Bono Show in the showroom at Michael Gaughan's South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa. Each week, we feature celebrities from the world of entertainment with music, comedy, and lots of fun interviews. A true variety show. The show is absolutely free. All you have to do is sign up for a South Point club card and join in the fun. The Dennis Bono Show, Thursdays at 2 p.m. at Michael Gaughan's South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa, 9777 Las Vegas Boulevard South. It's Vegas at its best. Night and day, under the height of me. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Once again, welcome to our holiday show. And it's great to see all of you again. And I hope you have a wonderful uh, holiday season. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. And however you uh, spend the holidays, uh, we're glad you're with us today. A uh, couple of announcements I want to make. Uh, let's see. Make reservations now with the bootlegger to see Corey Sachs Christmas evening. Right? Christmas night? Christmas night. Corey's going to... She's in Arizona now, right? Yeah, she'll be back. Uh, and coupons are available after the show. So I want to make sure I plug that. Also, my, my mother-in-law is here today. 97 years old. Where is she? There she is. There she is. And, and, uh, you know, she's the, she's the heroine of our family. She's the matriarch. And, uh, Anthony Bourdain from CNN discovered my mother-in-law and made her a star. Yeah. And they're rerunning that episode with Anthony Bourdain and my mother-in-law. And we're very, very proud of her. Uh, so if you haven't seen her on television, she's remarkable. 97 years old and a new star is born. And she's with her baby sister, Angie. Who's 90. We call them the Golden Girls. Yeah. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, let's see. Bootlegger Bistro. New Year's Eve. Two great parties. Uh, 3 p.m. Starts the regular menu. 9 p.m. Ringing in the New Year. Sinatra's Way. Entertainment. Four course meal. Fire, uh, the works. Everything. Italian meal featuring the Bootlegger Boys. Uh, Louis Merlino. Nicholas Cole with special guest artists. I don't even get billing anymore. I'm a special guest artist. Can't even put my freaking name on the billboard. Surprise! Here comes the special guest artist. So join us. Uh, it's an open, uh, let's see. And, and then at the Copa, the Casa de Copa, a ballroom, a completely a different party. Dining, dancing, music from uh, Motown to Beyonce. And uh, that's 9 p.m. until January 2nd. Uh, <laughs> the Bootlegger Bistro, best place to be on New Year's Eve. Join us, and I want to thank my wife for writing all this. <laughs> anyway, what else? Uh, it's, a, it's the holiday season, and, and, you know, I want... You've been getting a lot of... People don't write as many Christmas cards as they used to. You're not getting as many as you used to. But I, I did want to make an announcement. Um... You must mail your packages. The post office sent me this. said, you must mail your packages uh, by today if you want your gifts to be only three days late. <laughs> uh, let's see. The other thing I want to tell you, I can't help myself. It's, I have to do the same thing, even though it's the holidays. I read an article. Psychologists say that don't celebrate Christmas with your dog by buying him gifts. They said it's unhealthy because the dog doesn't know what Christmas is and it confuses him because basically he doesn't even know he's a dog. Okay? No, seriously, that's what they're saying, which that's not what happens with me because we baby him. But 
Because I'm saying if I tell him the truth about Santa, he's really going to be f***ed off when I tell him about the Easter Bunny. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's with great pleasure that I have the opportunity, uh, and not nearly enough, because she's truly an amazing woman, an amazing talent, and um, if you would, welcome her to the stage. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Lorraine Hunt Bono, wonderful singer, Lorraine Hunt Bono. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening in the lane? Snow is glistening. We sing love songs as we go along Walking in a winter wonderland Gone away Is the bluebird here to stay? Is the new bird He sings a love song as we go along Walking in a winter wonderland In the meadow we could build a snowman And pretend that he's Parson Brown He'll say, are you married? We'll say, no man. But you can do the job when you're in town. Later on, we'll conspire as we dream by the fire. To face unafraid the plans that we made, walking in a winter wonderland. Better we could build a snowman And pretend that he is Parson Brown He'll say, are you married? We'll say, no man You can't do the job when you're in town Later on, we'll conspire As we dream by the fire The face not afraid The plans that we made Walking in the winter wonderland we are talking in a winter wonderland And we're loving in a winter wonderland Merry Christmas Lorraine Hunt Bono Hello Dennis Bono <laughs> Fancy meeting you here How are you darling? Oh, nice to see you. you. Good to Thank have you, you join us it's today. It's always fun. I love when you come on the show. And you've rescued me on more than one occasion, but I always love having you on for the holiday Thank show you. because, I love you know, it. holidays are special for us. It is. We're Italian. We can't help it. We did. We cook. <laughs> We, we cook. cook. My mother-in-law so cooks. We drink. And we, I've, been, I've had my, my buddy and my army buddy, Dietz, who's over there uh, leaning against the bar because <laughs> he can't stand up straight. Um, but we've celebrated all week long. Yes, we do. We've had fun when he's here. and mm. But we like to celebrate with food and, and friends, and, friends and, and a little bit of booze. And mm. that's what we do. We're Italian. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I, I, everything's good? Everything's wonderful. Yeah. You're Just getting wonderful. ready for the holiday. Well, well, let me ask you a question. I, what? I, I, and what? I'm probably going to ask this to most of our guests today because everybody has a special, a special memory about Christmas. Now, oh. I must tell you, mine... Oh. Mine, and I, I talk about it every year. I was 12 years old. Everybody's got that one special Christmas. 12 years old, I had been bugging my mom and dad for, in those days, was a three-speed, three-speed bicycle with the thin tires. And, wow. you know, everybody in the neighborhood had one, and I had one of those American bikes with the fat tires and 24-inch, <laughs> and I wanted a, I wanted a, you know. And my mother and father said, no, we can't afford it this year. So I said, okay, so Christmas morning came, and I went downstairs and opened up the gifts, thinking that maybe, but I, I knew that they were telling me the truth. I got a globe. <laughs> oh, that's always nice. A volleyball, <laughs> underwear, socks, and you go, oh, thank you, Mom and Dad. <laughs> and they said, well, take the wrapping now and bring it out to the garbage pail in the garage. And I walked out. And there was that bike, all wrapped up, purple, 
Nobody in the neighborhood had a purple three speed. Wow. Mine, I was like the Cadillac. Whoa. So I mean, so you know, everybody's got. Did one. it have training wheels on it? <laughs> <laughs> you like that? He said that. I did good, huh? I don't know where the hell that line is, but. But, um, yeah, so everybody's got, do you have a special memory? Oh. I mean, I'm sure you did growing up because you came oh. from a wonderful household full of yeah. love and music and oh food. My God. But uh, what's your favorite yeah, Christmas? I mean, Mom and Angie, we had parties and lots of food, cookies, everything. But I have to say, two Christmases ago, Dennis, when you surprised me with that little baby Yorkie puppy, Jilly. Oh, that was the best. He's still a good looking boy. You got a picture He's, of him here? There he is. We were leaving to go to the show today, and he looked up at us and said, Where are you going? You're leaving. He t- he, I swear to God, I talk to him like that all the time. He tilts his head. And it's pretty much when she talks to me, I do the same thing. I do. <laughs> are you going to go shopping? And I go, They're both well trained. Yeah. <laughs> That's our little boy, Jilly, two years old now. Yeah, he's a doll. Great. That he, was the best Christmas present. It was a surprise. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I told her I wasn't going to get her. Uh, she wanted a dog. And I said, no, we're not getting a dog. So meanwhile, what I had done was I had already researched and found a breeder and did three months of, of you know, research and, and surprised her with this dog. And the, the picture, because we couldn't get it for Christmas, the picture was of... The dog that the breeder sent with a little Christmas hat on said, I'll be home soon, Mommy. So, mm-hmm. Well, that's our little boy. So the that's, gift that keeps giving, Jilly, yeah, yeah. Jilly Bono. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I trained him. I trained him because, uh, you know, first I had to say, you know, we don't do this anymore. You know, Because <laughs> she trained me. She said, don't do this anymore, Dennis. <laughs> so... Anyway, everybody's got special memories for Christmas. Yeah. You know, we're going to have a lot of fun today because I got great friends on and and great music and and terrific singers. Um, this gentleman is a is a good friend. Has become a really good friend. He stars in the Rat Pack show at the Rio, but uh, he's a terrific comedian, a songwriter, and uh, he's got a Christmas show this Friday at the T Spot at the Tuscany. Um, and he's going to do a charity uh, for homeless uh, children at 9.30 p.m. I think it's that same night. But just a terrific talent, a good friend. A warm welcome, if you would, the very funny and the very versatile Mr. Dennis Blair. Gentlemen, it's so good to be here on uh, the show with my my wonderful friend, special guest artist. Let's hear it for him. <laughs> I've actually forgotten your name. That's how wonderful you are. Merry Christmas, Happy Han Chinooka. How do you pronounce that? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Hanukkah. Thank you, sir. The guy took me seriously. This is fantastic. Already, I'm getting the pity empathy vote from the audience. <laughs> your poor guy. He doesn't understand how to pronounce things. You know what today is? I love this holiday. You know what today is for me? Seven days until total insolvency. I'll be looking at my Christmas bills going, What? What? Who ordered a toaster? And I don't know why I'm Gilbert Gottfried all of a sudden, but it happens every (laughs) once in a while. Isn't it a wonderful holiday season, ladies and gentlemen? Fantastic. And you know, by the way, Christmas gets all the songs. You think that's fair? Christmas gets every song. Eight billion Christmas songs, not one Thanksgiving song, one song for New Year's, and it's not even any good. It's not. Can you figure this out? What does this mean? You sing it. Should old acquaintance be forgot and ever brought to mind? And while you're at it, please explain what the hell is old Lang Syne. Anyone? No. <laughs> what are they doing? Sounds like a scotch. Yeah, I'll have a beer and give me a shot of old Lang Syne, please. <laughs> and then they have that, te- and it's a terrible, horrible message. Like, should old acquaintance be forgot? You drink this stuff, and apparently you forget all your old friends. <laughs> Should old acquaintance, what, your wife is going to be sitting there going, Happy New Year, honey. Who are you? <laughs> I'm your wife. You must be my old wife. Because you said forget your old acquaintances. <laughs> Wonderful holiday. Really, I love it. We give each other gifts. You know why we give each other gifts? Because the wise men brought Jesus gifts. So we give each other gifts. Although, the guy who brought the gold screwed it up for the other two. Don't you think? 
I mean, they go, oh, we got frankincense for Jesus. What do you got? I got myrrh. What do you got? Gold. Oh, screw you! <laughs> we had a deal. And then they brought the gifts to Jesus, and Joseph had to pretend he liked all of them. You know, obviously, did very good acting job for Joseph. You know, oh, Mary, gold. We are set for life. This is fantastic. What did you bring us, Bill? Frankincense. I have no idea what this is. Oh, look, Joey brought us myrrh. Myrrh! Mary, we were just talking about how we were hoping we'd get some myrrh. Because last year you gave us... We're going to re-gift this. I don't care what you say. But at least Christmas I understand, right? Because, you know, Jesus is born. We give each other gifts. I will never understand Easter. Jesus is riven, risen. Let us hard-boil eggs. <laughs> Where did that come from? I don't know. Jesus, we have hard-boiled eggs for you. What should we do with them? I don't know. Color them? Leave me alone. <laughs> Can I tell you my one, my favorite Christmas joke before I do this song I'm going to do? It was a horrible Christmas for Santa. He was really depressed. His reindeer was sick. His elves were drunk. And his wife had left him for the Easter bunny. So he was in a really foul mood, Santa was, when there was a knock on his door and he opened it and standing at his door was an angel with a Christmas tree and the angel said, Santa, I know you weren't feeling very good and I looked all day and all night for this fabulous tree. I looked all night in my garden and I found it. It's the perfect Christmas tree just for you, Santa. Where would you like me to stick it? <laughs> and that is how the tradition of the angel on top of the Christmas tree got started. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that I've ruined Christmas for everybody, I would now like to do a song called Santa's Got It Easy with this fabulous band. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Well, Santa Claus, he smiles a lot. I would too with the life he's got. Hey, Santa's got it easy. Santa's got it easy. Santa's got it easy, only works one day a year. Well, if I did that, they'd call me a bum. That's unemployment where I come from. Hey, Santa's got it easy. Well, Santa's got it easy. Well, Santa's got it easy, only works one day a year. Well, he puts some toys upon his sleigh. Hops on the back and he zooms away It takes one day to do that chore He sleeps for the other three Sixty-four How much free time can you take? That's what I call a coffee break Hey, Santa's got it easy Well, Santa's got it easy Well, Santa's got it easy Only works one day a year Oh, tell it, fat man Some toys upon his sleigh Then he hops down the back And he zooms away it Takes one day to do that chore He sleeps for the other three Sixty-four If I had a job like that I'd wear that stupid suit and hat Hey, Santa's got it easy Well, Santa's got it easy Well, Santa's got it easy Only works one day a year One more time, here we go Oh, Santa's got it easy well, Santa's got it easy. Well, Santa's got it easy. Only works one day a year. Hey, Santa, get a real job. Is Merry this quick. guy nuts or what? Dennis Blair, ladies and gentlemen. Dennis Blair. Get the mic. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm a weird guy. I never, I never know what you're going to do. Thank you. Well, I never know either. I had no idea I was going to be here until two minutes ago. <laughs> How are you, my friend? Great, Dennis. Always a pleasure. Hey, Happy a holidays to you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Yeah, we have each other. Happy Easter. I'm early. Dennis Blair, ladies Thank you, sir. and gentlemen. Take a short pause. Coming right back.
Hey, Lorraine, do you realize that your mother, my mother-in-law, Chef Maria, has been serving Las Vegas since 1949? Yes, I do, Dennis. That's when she first met Howard Hughes and other Las Vegas legends who fell in love with her cooking. And in 1955, with the family, she opened her first restaurant on Fremont Street. Yes, dear. Remember, I was there. And another great customer was Liberace. At that time, he was the highest paid entertainer in Las Vegas, earning $50,000 a week. Man, you guys must have made a fortune. Not really, Dennis. Our large pizza was only 90 cents. Wow. Then in 1962, while Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack were causing global excitement on the Las Vegas Strip, your family opened their second restaurant. Right. And in 1972, Elvis Presley began electrifying Las Vegas audiences and eating in our restaurant. You know, Lorraine, this is quite a town. There's nowhere like it in the world. There's only one Las Vegas. And there's only one bootlegger Italian bistro. Folks, when you're in Las Vegas, come visit us. We'll make you feel like you're part of our family. The bootlegger Italian bistro, conveniently located at 7700 Las Vegas Boulevard, South Strip. Visit our website at www.bootleggerlasvegas.com. Thank you all very much. Happy holidays to everybody. Thank you, guys. I'm sitting here with my lovely wife, Lorraine Hunt Bono, and my lovely friend, Dennis Blair. Adorable. Good to have you with us. Um, you know, keeping with the wonderful theme of festive music and celebrating the holidays, uh, it's with great pleasure that I bring on, she truly is a star, a shining star with an incredible array and a resume, I should say, of uh, Broadway shows and she's currently starring at Vegas the show. She's so much fun when she comes on, and I thought this would be more most appropriate today. A warm welcome once again, Miss Reba Rice. A good girl, Santa baby, hurry down the chimney tonight. Santa baby, a 54 convertible to light blue. I'll wait up for you, dear Santa baby, hurry down the chimney tonight. Think of all the fun I've missed. The fellas that I haven't kissed. I believe in you, so well. let's see if you believe in me. Santa baby, want a yacht, and really that's not a lot. Been an angel all year, Santa baby. Hurry down the chimney tonight, Santa honey. I want something for you, light blue. Oh, don't choke up now, Dennis. Santa baby, hurry down the chimney tonight. Santa cutie, fill my stocking with a duplex and checks. Sign the X on the line, Santa baby. Hurry down the chimney tonight. And trim my Christmas tree With some decorations from Tiffany I really do believe in you Let's see if you believe in me Santa baby, one more thing I forgot a ring Oh, I'm not talking about on the phone <laughs> Santa baby, hurry down the chimney tonight Chimney tonight. Oh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and all that. Yes. Reba Wright. Thank you so much. Woo. Over here. Where am I going? Don't worry. I'm good. I'm good. 
I, I said, you know, I, I, at the holiday show, I said, I've got to have Reba come on and do that song. I just, I said, I know she's going to take this. And well, I didn't get a chance to bring all, I was going to bring all my props and things, but I didn't get a chance to pack my props because I had a whole.